funny thing happened while during that concert, Jaco Pastorius walked on stage oh, and, wow. he, and yeah. he started going up to the different musicians and trying mm-hmm. to like, Hey, can I play? Like he went up uh-huh. to the bass player and the bass player was like, no, he went up to the piano player. It was like, no. they were not letting him. He was just, he just bum rushed the stage and <laughs> he was kind of bugging at the end. Oh um, yeah. 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 Short, short, spectacular life for him. Yeah. Sh- I just watched a video with him and Toots Thielsman, Toots, mm-hmm. the harmo- uh, chromatic harp player. Beautiful. My love is food, baby. Without it, you'd be starving. My next guest here on Musicians Reveal is a longtime friend, an incredible musician, Carson Daly of the Today Show and also of MTV, dubbed him, I think, a New York musical institution. And he definitely is. We've seen him live several times, had him on the show numerous times. He has new music. He's always out doing gigs. We welcome Milo, Milo Z. How you doing, brother? All right. Great, man. Great to see you. Great to see you. And, uh, you're out in Manhattan. We were talking born and raised and still living in New York City, right? Still here, Lower East Side. Right. Uh, East Village, rather. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah, still still doing the East Village. So so what is uh, what has changed from when you first... Let, let's go back to when you first got into music. It uh-huh. was in the 70s, right? Uh, yeah. In the 70s, when I was about, I guess, late 70s, uh, I was about 12 and, um, I was a mischief, mischievous kid. And, uh, <laughs> me and my friends were always getting into little shenanigans and there was a U-Haul lot behind my house. Uh, and we used to sneak in the U-Haul lot and we were, we would get into the cabs of the trucks and we would, uh, try to get the radios out of the, out of the cabs of the trucks, you know, with a screwdriver. And uh-huh. try to sell them down on Canal Street. Okay. And never had any luck. But uh, we got a couple of radios. One time we opened the back of a truck and there was a whole set of practice pads. It was a drum, not a drum set, but like, you know, the pads. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we each like grabbed the pad and some sticks and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I brought it home and mom's was like, where did you get that? <laughs> you know? Uh, right. Oh, we found it in the trash in the alley, blah, 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 blah. Oh, really? I don't think so. You know, that kind of thing. And I was like, and so I started banging on the um, pads. Mm-hmm. And after a little while, I I said, Mom, can you get me a drum set? And she was like, hell no. Because uh, I know you'll it'll just sit in the corner collecting dust. Right. And um, I, I, would, I was adamant. I was like, please, 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 please. She said, I'll tell you what, if you take lessons for a year, Mm-hmm. And that'll prove to me that you really want to stick with it. And it was okay. a great thing because I, it, I, so I took lessons for a year um, at third street music school, which is um, still located. Now it's, it's on 11th street. It was on third street and moved to 11th street, but it kept the, the name third street music school. And uh, I forget who the teacher was, but um, I forget his name. But I did it for a year, and and true to her word, she 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 got me this drum set from uh, this guy in my junior high school was selling a set of drums, a Dia Deluxe Sparkle Blue, mm-hmm. um, like a four piece. There was no hi hat, but it was like snare, bass drum, one tom, floor tom, and like a cymbal mounted cymbal on the bass drum that sounded like you know. Ping. Yeah. Um, and then that, 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 that's, that's how I got into music. And then I just kept at it. Yep. So do you ever uh, make it over to Washington square park and, and, you know, jam, jam out there? I never did. I never did. No. Uh, recently, like more recently, like in 2020, 2021, when there weren't any gigs to be had, Mm -hmm. uh, me and a couple of the guys, went out and did some busking uh just to play and i brought a i didn't bring drums but i brought a cajon 
you know, okay. uh, it's, it's like the box. Actually, my computer is sitting on it right now. So it's, you know. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. So I brought I, that out. I brought out that out on the street. My bass player had an amp that was bat you could charge, battery charge. Mm -hmm. And uh guitar player ran through it and a keyboard player with a he played the guitar, guitar. Okay. Right. And that had batteries. So we did some gigs. So that was the only time I no that I'm 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 lying. That's not the only time I ever bust. When I was about twenty one, I used to play on the street with this this guy, Simon Chartier guitar player mm -hmm. um up by central park by the plaza uh hotel there yeah I, i'm going back to i was i was laughing in my head about the story you were you know breaking into the car stealing radios yeah uh, for for music wise i uh and I, I told my mother in later years this i i went into her pocketbook and took twenty dollars out and went and bought elton john fan magazines and mirrored sunglasses and came home <laughs> and same thing your mom said where did you get that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so they know. Yeah. They knew. They knew. They yeah. Knew. But, you know, it, 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 you know, it's not, so, it's just what it was. But, you know, that little delinquency led me to a good place, led me to, led me to music. And, and, right. you know, I focused more on that than in, uh, and it kept me out of trouble, kept me out of trouble. Right. Now, you came up in a great time for live music. You know, everybody was playing instruments and you guys, all over the city, some great venues. What was your your first introduction into uh, the live music scene? Because you're phenomenal on stage. Let's talk about that. Um, when I was about 15, 16, um, I stumbled across this blues bar uh, mm -hmm. called Dan Lynch's. And it was on 2nd Avenue between 13th and 14th Street. And they had a Sunday jam. And I was just walking by one day and the door opened and I heard this great sound coming out. And it was it was the blues. And uh, I went in and I and I sat and I didn't uh, sit in that day, but I watched and I watched this drummer, Honey, Honey Boy Otis, great drummer from New Orleans. Mm -hmm. uh, he was so in the pocket and he was playing with this this band. And uh, I was just like, wow, ma a, a, amazing scene. And they let me in as long as I didn't drink. And, uh, you know, I drank Coca-Cola, but, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then I think the next week I went back there with my sticks and sat in and got in the jam. And that was kind of my introduction to playing live in front of people, you know, right. up until that point, I was just playing in my room, trying to uh, play along to the radio, uh, occasionally doing jams in studios with some of my friends, you know, uh, you know, renting a couple of hours, two, three hours. Uh, what was the studio it was called? I think it was called, I think it was called the Matrix, Matrix. Somewhere like around 27th Street, 6th Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. But that- Yeah, had a, you had a hustle, but it, it must have been a great time. It was, it was. And that was such a great experience, you know, uh, just being able to sit in, have, having, uh, having a venue like that, uh, you know, to play in front of people to try to just groove and then you know i'd have uh these older guys say you know they, they, they give me the thumbs up or they say hey man you're slowing down you're slowing down <laughs> i was like oh right, right. okay let me let me let me work on that yeah yeah so you're definitely in manhattan i could hear some sirens too oh yeah it's constant yeah. i don't even hear them anymore yeah i know the yeah. time i hear them is when i'm on the street and, I, and, and they're still loud to me i still have to right. like cover my ears oh okay so yeah, let, let's talk about- I haven't lost about, all my hearing yet. Yeah, yeah, you still, it can irritate you, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, you've released uh, recently two great singles. Uh, the first one, some great, as you described that, I think you told me some great baby making music. Bird, give me a chance, baby, just one chance to show you. That's right. The slow jam. Grown yeah. folk baby making music. Yeah. yeah. Tell tell us about uh, recording this one. And it, it kind of goes back to the feel of the uh, quiet storm, funky side mm -hmm, of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's definitely, I think it's kind of got maybe a, a 90s R&B feel, mm -hmm. you know, with, with, with also like 90s production wise, I would say, but like with that Al Green vibe, 
uh it's a slow jam it's a it's a it's the sexy slow jam uh you know reminiscent Life. on on a relationship that is no longer and uh it's called show you just one chance now i recorded this song on a live album called live and bumping at tramps in new york city oh, great in place. 1999 yeah. mm -hmm. um but i never did a studio recording of it so so it's on so show you is on that album it's called live and bumping uh but i always wanted to do a studio recording and i felt i felt that live version was cool I'm, i think i'm a much better singer than i was back then so i really wanted to do it the way i hear it heard it you know right and i think it came out great it's really slow it's got that vibe that sexy it's baby making music. This is grown folk baby making music. That's that's all right. So so where where can our viewers and listeners pick up? Uh, it's it's out digitally on all yeah. platforms. Okay. Uh, you can you can you can stream it. You can download it. You know Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify. It's on YouTube. Uh, wherever wherever you you know. I know not too many people are even downloading music anymore. But if you are, buy the song. If not, it. stream it, whatever. Right. Yeah. Did did CD Baby make a comeback? Because something came up in my feed like CD Baby. I don't know if I... they, they're still here. I don't think they ever left. I mean, okay. I did release this through CD Baby, and then okay. and then they 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 shoot it out to all the all the platforms, the digital platforms. Okay. Um, that what they stopped doing, which was un, is unfortunate, is they stopped selling the actual discs. Oh, they, wow. used, they used to have that, and that was great because sometimes people still want want the discs, you know, CDs. Um, mm -hmm. So you have to go to like for that Amazon and stuff, you know. Right, right. Um, but not too many people are buying CD discs anymore. Although I still have some, and I still sell them at my shows. Um, but like, show you that's a single, you know. So there isn't okay. a disc. So when you were growing up, late seventies, early eighties, or all through the eighties, I mean, you were probably like me. New York City had so much to offer vinyl wise and, and great music stores. I yeah. remember yeah. going. Uh, there were, uh, Jelly Bean Benitas was in the. There was a like a DJ store in, in Grand the West Village. Uh huh. The name forgets uh, escapes uh -huh. me right over there, but no. Nah, but, Sounds maybe. Yeah, uh, I think that was it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, was that maybe on like Thompson Street? Uh, I think so. It wasn't too far from Washington Square Park. Right, right, right. And um, the second coming for bootlegs. I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember that place. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely miss those times. Yeah. There's but still you... a few record stores around here. There's one mm -hmm. on 6th Street between Avenue A and 1st Avenue. What's, what's that one? I don't know. There's a few. It's um, and the, and there's there's stores that sell vinyl, strictly right, vinyl right. too. Yeah, which has made a comeback. Which which is it's just weird to me, but that's yeah. cool. That's yeah, cool. yeah. We waited outside for like eight hours to to meet Prince at Tower Records in the Village. Wow. That was, yeah. So that was, that was a good time. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Hey, you mentioned Al Green. I know uh, he's a huge influence, and you were big fan of al green so I, I believe yeah. so right yeah yeah I, um i had the I, i'm sorry no i'm saying what, what appeals to al i mean we know he's a great know, singer and everything but what really got into you al green i was just i was actually just watching some some videos of him a few days ago and uh i mean well his voice and the way he just the way he just um displayed emotion through okay. his singing and i mean so sensual you know no wonder the the women went crazy for him you know he was just he had that thing and you can t and then he became the reverend al green and you can kind of see that you know because like even when he was singing his mutant not, not you know secular music you know he had that that thing right out of the church his music is about the sexiest as sexy as it gets right um marvin gay al green prince i had i had the pleasure of opening up for him one time 
in uh, what was it? I think it was Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, and it was amazing. It was amazing. He, he had an all white suit on. I remember it. And uh, yeah, interesting, interesting guy. Interesting guy, right? He yeah, um, oh yeah. When he had that incident where uh, that that terrible incident where the, some woman uh, threw hot grits on him and burned him. Yeah, and, yeah he was taking a bath or something. Yeah. And, yeah, and I think yeah. she committed suicide. He left the room or something. And she committed suicide, and then you know, then he maybe that that affected him. Definitely affected him. You know. Right. Right. How could it not? Yeah. So, so uh, Marvin Gaye, you mentioned, I know uh, what's going on is right that's, up there for you, right? That's, that's, I think that's the best. Al- for me, that's like one of the best albums of all yeah. time. Uh, I had Leon Ware on the show a few years back. Great guy. Yeah. Uh-huh. He passed away, but he, uh-huh. he did a lot of stuff with with Marvin Gaye. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Did you get a chance to see Marvin Gaye live? Never did. Yeah. I just the videos <laughs> yeah yeah sheila so, e used to play in his band really oh percussion right she used yeah, to play percussion. With wow yeah. yeah so i think i should like that yeah right so so milo uh we'll, we'll have things flashing up when we, we release this but where can people go to find out about the, the gigs and your your music my main site for posting gigs well, you can go to the website, but it's it's hasn't been really updated in a minute, so it looks old. My website, I like my Reverb Nation page, okay. so it's Reverb Nation, Milo Z, just com, like backslash it. Milo Z, right? Yeah, and um, you know, I post up my latest videos of shows and uh, update my calendar for gigs, uh, blogs. The music is out there on, on the streaming platform. So, yeah, right. show you is out there. We'll talk about stand-up in, in a little bit. Um, okay. Talking about gigs, um, I saw some pictures. You you played the Blue Note, Trey, Trey yeah. Donia. Yeah, what, oh, man, that was amazing. Yeah. Tell, tell us about Trey Donia and your collaboration. Yes, yeah, so so Trey Donia, um, I, I, what, I used to call it Trey Donia. I thought Cal, Cal Donia, Trey Donia, but oh, it's yeah. Donia. We crossed paths, like, I think – in the 90s, she had a band called Sample This. And okay. then she had another band she was in called Slaying Suckers with Logic, SSL. Okay. Uh, groovy, funky, rocking. And um, so we crossed paths. I think we did some double, some bills together. And then recently, about a year ago, uh, online, I think through Facebook or Instagram, we just started communicating and said yeah we should do some collab and and it and, and it was a great it was a great uh great union um so so Tredania has since recorded uh, a few tracks with me now stand up the one you just mentioned she's on right. that and then we have some other stuff coming out in the next few months a song called uh gone away which is basically real bluesy rocky but it's like it's like blues rock funk and it's it's one of those like it's it's a duet so so it's like it's like the words are like why should i call tonight when all i'm going to feel is lonely why should i call tonight when you're just going to put that hurting on me and then she answers me like why should why should i come around uh just because it's a lonely sunday why should i play the clown when you just leave me with a stormy monday and um, so we're going back and forth, and then we're like, the love, love is gone, and it's 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 real cool. Um, right. I've never done a track like that, uh, a song like that, and uh, it's kind of like rep- reminiscent. And at the end of the song, it's kind of reminiscent of like, I don't know, I wouldn't say Marvin Gaye, Tammy Terrell. She's more of a Tammy Terrell. I'll never compare myself to Marvin Gaye, but um, you know, or or maybe Otis Redding and. Uh, you know that song Tramp? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Nothing but a tramp, you know, the, at the end, I forget who is the, the vocalist, but uh, I'm a lover. Yeah, I, I forget, I forget what it's called Tramp. And, right. and it, it, it's got that like interplay. Yeah. This, this track has that same kind of thing at the end. We start like ragging on each other. So I'm real excited about that track. And then we have another track, uh, 
we're going to put out. It's called Ghetto Beatdown, mm-hmm. um, which is which Trey sings the chorus and she sings the bridge, and uh, I hit the verses, and it's it's another great collaboration. So it's um, yeah, I'm looking forward to putting these out. And I'll Reverb Nation, yeah, yeah, I'll, and I'll hit you up with them, of course. Yeah, they're not out yet, okay. but soon, soon. But we've been playing them live at the shows. We, 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 uh, like you said, I just played the Blue Note. That was amazing to be on on that in that legendary space with so many legends that have graced the stage. It was just it was just an honor to be there. And we we did. Um, they were doing a jazz brunch thing on Saturday. Um, okay. I think they're still running it. And um, but of course, with me, it was a funk brunch. Right. You know, got to bring the funk. Got to bring the funk. And, and we had a nice turnout. And uh, we'll be back. We'll be back in the new year, maybe beginning of the year. I'll definitely keep you posted on it. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, my wife and I were talking earlier today about when we saw you at a place in South Norwalk, Connecticut, a uh-huh. club. And we both couldn't. We used to go there all the time, like Sunday night. But we both, both of us forgot the name of the club. But when we saw you, I think I told you the story. But we started like two rows in front of the, where you were performing the stage. And with it, by the second song. The crowd was so hype and moving. I was almost outside the door, like <laughs> from where I entered. I mean, wow. you you had the crowd going, yeah. Was, was that the Globe Theater? No, it wasn't Globe North Theater. Walk? It was like it, no. it was South North. It wasn't far from the Globe Theater, uh-huh. but it was uh like a nightclub on okay. uh, smaller, yeah, smaller, smaller packed venue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. And you about. were like you were like right up the bands are like right up with the audience. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think that was a club that um Ashford and Simpson owned. I might be uh, wrong, but yeah, I'm not sure. I mean mm-hmm. they're they're uh I I don't know if Valerie's still there. Think, or they, yeah, yeah, but, you yeah. know, funny story. In eighty two I met Nick Ashford at Seaside Park in Bridgeport and he was driving a, a mustard colored Rolls Royce. Wow. So I went up and introduced myself. I work in radio and we had a chat. 25 years later or so, maybe maybe 20 years later, I see Nick Ashford, a mustard color Rolls Royce, just a newer version. And we started talking about radio and he signed his business card. Solid. Nice. <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah. Solid as a rock. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, exactly. So where we used to do the show in Fairfield, Connecticut, mm-hmm. they were, I think they lived maybe five, 10 minutes away. I There's a lot of musicians right. over there. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah I think you, that was the venue. I think that was the venue. Yeah, yeah. Our our friend Mystic Bowie used to perform like a, a freeform jam with his band on Sunday nights there, which was okay. cool. Yeah, we used yeah, to go and, he, and I remember seeing uh, Nick there at the venue. So yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you've been around a long time when we're referencing like, uh, you know, Nick Ashford and all that. And and um, uh. Valerie, I think she they, she still owns. There's a, a place called the Sugar Bar on like I want to say West 75th something. Okay. It's a music venue, uh, yeah. restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about great songwriters mm-hmm. and a love couple and everything like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. So yeah. another, you know, I mean, we referenced some of this in the village, but another place. You know, a few places out in the village. You you made your mark there. Uh, the Red Lion, the Bitter End. What what are special about? I I saw you get. You might have been guesting with Days of Wild at the Bitter End once. Um yeah, I've yeah. sat in with them a right. couple of times. I know these uh, Gaiosius and yeah, another uh, drummer musicians. Yeah. yeah, the drummer and um, yeah. Oh oh well. Uh, for a while when we did the thing at the Red Lion. I mean, I'm still doing that. I'm playing there this Tuesday. So I'm okay. still doing my funky thing at the red line, but I would do from, and I still am doing from like 10 to one. Mm-hmm. And then days of wild would play after. Oh, okay. It was just like a natural. Yeah. I'm hanging out. Let me sit in. I would either sing rap or play, play drums. Yeah. That days of wild. I mean, really great band. Yeah. Very loose. I think, they might have played the Red Lion and wanted me to come up on stage and sing a Prince song with them. Uh huh. Well, I believe it. Yeah, they did. Did the Prince and James Brent, Sly Stone? Very, very into Sly Stone. Yep. Yeah, Swang uh, is in the Family Stone, right? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. He's singing he's and playing keys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. How's Guy Osha's doing? I haven't talked to him in a while. 
I haven't either. I haven't yeah. either. Um, yeah. I opened up for the Family Stone. Uh, Swang wasn't in it at the time, but it was a few years ago at um, NJ Pack. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was cool. Right, right. And uh, another place I was mentioning before, because we live just outside Saratoga Springs, Ciro's, which is like, <laughs> you walk like 50 feet and you're on right. the track and you're right, right in the club. there a couple of times. Right. During yeah. track season, right? Right. Yeah. So so let me ask you, a, a guy who has been influential and, and he's no longer here, God rest his soul, Mo Holmes. Mo was Holmes. Was a mentor of yours and, you know. Brother wow. Mo. Tell, yeah. tell us about this great guy. So Mo, I met, I mentioned Dan Lynch's, uh, the place where I started playing drums, uh, the blues bar. That's where mm -hmm. I met Mo. Mo. Mo was singing with the Holmes brothers and uh great great group uh blues you know gospel influenced and um he just turned out to be just just the, just the, the greatest guy and and uh, kind of like a mentor and we became good friends and uh he taught me a lot about singing harmony and then he started like just coming to all my gigs and 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 we'd let him sit in and he would do like whatever mustang sally or something and then we started right. doing what's going on marvin gay and, and then he just started singing harmony and he kind of like became a member of the group um so he was in the group like different times uh he was in and out of the group um but just a beautiful cat beautiful soul beautiful voice talk about a guy who was definitely influenced by marvin gay um, he had one of those angelic voices, but he also had a kind of like, uh, he also kind of had maybe that Otis Redding tone too, a little bit. Um, just a, just a wonderful cat, a lot of presence, stage presence. Um, you know, uh, what can I say? Just a great, great guy. Um, I took him to Greece with me. That's did, right. Yeah. Yeah. Did the live and, album out there. He did a live album there. He was, no, I did two live albums with him. He was on both of them. He was on the, the one I recorded at Tramps called Live and Bumpin', which had the show you on, the original uh, version. Mm -hmm. um, and he killed it. He, if you want to hear him singing beautifully, there's a song called Start All Over When the Morning Comes that I. I used to do and it, and we did the live version at that that live and bumping cd he just sounds so beautiful at the end he sounds like marvin at times and um yeah and then and then i took him to greece and we recorded a live album there and uh i think he sang can't get next to you he was featured on that uh okay. and uh just a beautiful cat beautiful cat miss him so so when did mo pass away he passed away in 2008 okay yeah we went we did that big concert in greece in 2006 oh, okay. and uh yeah he had a steady gig at terra blues every sunday mo homes and the pioneers oh, okay yeah. and i i remember going going there i think it was like february or something it was winter time it was i don't i don't remember exactly but uh he, I, I went there he didn't show up one night and then i was like what, what happened well he wasn't feeling well then I heard uh, from his son that he had an embolism in his leg. Oh, okay. And traveled and, wow. Yeah. Terra yeah, Blues, had, right next to the bitter end, right? Right next to the bitter end. Yeah. 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 He had a lot of health pro problems. Mm -hmm. Well, it was the Holmes brothers were on Alligator Records at one yep. time, right? Yeah. Yep. The Holmes yeah. brothers, uh, they, they, they were one of those groups that were like all, they were grandfathers playing Dan Lynch's every, every saturday they'd had that saturday slot but they also like sometimes hosted the jam on sundays um and they just uh got signed they were all like in their 50s maybe 60 and um and then they had a good run unfortunately mm -hmm. mo didn't go with them because mo had recently had a falling out with them so mo didn't get on those records unfortunately yeah but um those records are great and uh I think Joan Osborne produced one of their records, one of their later records. 
Um, since then, uh, uh, a couple of them have passed away. Wendell passed away, and so did Popsy Holmes. Talk about a dr singing drummer with great vocals. I mean, his falsetto was just amazing. Um, mm -hmm. But I think Sherman is still still with us. And, uh, and yeah, big ups to Sherman Holmes. Uh, yeah, great group. Great group. Soul. Just the real stuff, you know, country, right. blues. So you've... Uh... You you play with so many different styles of musicians in, in your your live show course. You always bring the funk, but you had a collaboration with another guy who who's not with us any any longer. Biz Marquis, oh, one yeah. of your earliest records. Yeah, nobody beats the Biz. Nobody what, beats how, the Biz. How'd you guys get together? So 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 uh, first off, I was a fan of Biz Marquis before I met him. It, when I first got into hip hop, my my. Uh, the tapes I had, I would buy Rock Kim, definitely LL Cool J, uh, um, who's amazing. Th this guy just came out with an album. I mean, he's he's the GOAT. He just came out with it. He's like the only rapper who's who's charted in five. Wait a minute. I'm going to get this right. In five decades. He charted in the 80s. He charted in the 90s. He charted in the 2000s. Charted in the, the you know, the. 2015 or whatever and now he's charted again the only rapper yeah i saw him on the today show performing live yeah yeah he he has just did a big one with eminem i'm still a fan of, of of ll i'd love to meet him one day but bit so so it was rock him mm -hmm. uh uh ll cool j krs1 mm -hmm. and then then for for laughs and goofs and and because he was funky biz marquee just right. the best. Nobody beats the biz. Um, uh, the diabolical one. Uh, yeah, I got the tapes like right around here. <laughs> uh, um, just loved them. Uh, and um, so, so when I was making my first record, um, I went to my manager's office one day, and and I saw a Bismarcky tape. Uh, like on his desk and, and i said oh you know bismarck he said you know bismarck yeah you know bismarck and i was like <laughs> like a big fan he's like you want to meet him blah, blah blah i'm like hell yeah so i think the next time i came in bismarck came in the door and he was just like he had heard um the roughs of the of the record we were about to put out and he was mm -hmm. like man i dig dig your shit and he, he said he said i sound like uh joe williams the j jazz singer joe williams oh yeah yeah right <laughs> Home. and i was like oh wow I, I, I thank you and he said i'd love to you know get on something i was like really great so he got on the, the track get on up and love we went song, down yeah. to uh chung king studios which was the famous uh studio in chinatown where where like ll cool j recorded uh, like everybody recorded it was it was the um the beastie boys recorded it was that that famous like Hip hop studio, Chung King Studios, and Biz Marquis came down. He did a couple of different takes. Mm -hmm. We chose one, and that's the one that ended up getting on the uh, on the record. Yeah, yeah. Um, what stop. a character! Yeah, great, great dude, great dude. Um, I only had a few interactions with him. One was in my manager's office. Mm -hmm. Two, I think the second one I was in the bank with my, my brother Jojo uh -huh. and, and we were opening up, I say, say this, our first bank accounts mm -hmm. uh, at, at age like 30. Um, right. Because- Other than that, it was under the, under the mattress, under right? Under the table and everything, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, bars and stuff yeah. like that. So, so, but I got my first check from Mercury and you know, um, so my manager said, you got to go to this bank and open up an account. So, um, so it was like, so we went and we were filling stuff out, me and Joe and the, the teller said, oh, you take this and go fill it out. So we okay. went to a desk and we started filling out whatever. And, and Biz Marquis was there was like, and we started chatting and stuff. And then me and Joe got back on the end of the line. I don't know. There was a few people we got back on the line and Biz Marquis like, no, you don't have to do that. You, you go right up. You go right up. You, 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 you know, I was like, oh, cool. And we went right up and we skipped like this line of 10 people. And, 
And so I, I appreciate, I appreciated right. um, Bismarcky helping us out and uh, directing us. So we went up to the line, opened our first bank account. And then the next time I saw him was at the video shoot. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, and he, he showed up with a, 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 a blonde wig. Hey, it's me, the original B-R-Z, M-A-R-K-I-E, with the Milo Z. Now I like to get on down with the sound, and you know I'm the talk of the town now. We get down with the If you watch the video, it's <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, and he killed it. He killed it. But he had forgotten, he had forgotten all his word, his lyrics to the rap. Right. He, he did. He did not remember this. <laughs> so so when we get up and you do the, he's doing yeah. the rap, he's just going, he's just doing He's not like that. <laughs> so it's like he didn't remember what he had rapped. Right. You know. Yeah, he um, wasn't he wasn't back home, you know, he wasn't rehearsing he, before. Nah, he wasn't he wasn't <laughs> he, he he had totally forgotten. But but yeah. it's cool, but it still worked and the video right. came out great. Um it's still up on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. My OZ get on up with Bismarcky. Um so it was just an honor, honor to 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 do to 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 have him on it, man. Yeah. That yeah. was amazing. You know, I a somewhat recent collaboration with your friend Frank Ocasio, right? You yes. Did a, a track. Frank, he's from Ocasio? Huh? Frank Ocasio, right? Yep, Frank Ocasio. Um, yeah. He's he's a great dude, great guitar player. Actually, we just rehearsed last night. Big ups, Frank. Um, <laughs> we rehearsed last night because he's on a gig with me next Saturday at this place called Carmine's Deli in Elmsford, Elmsford New York. And um, he's playing guitar. He's playing oh, okay. guitar. And I am going to be playing drums on that gig. I'm going to be singing as well. But I'm playing the drums. And he's on guitar. And Trey Danya's on it. So it's it's going to be a little different. Oh. It, 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 this, this should be interesting. And you, still wear, you still wear your uh, your suits while you're playing drums? I don't think so. Oh, OK. You're going to. Nah, it's a little <laughs> too hot for that. You know? Yeah, yeah, right. Not enough room. All tight. You know? Right. Yeah. How but, about uh, uh, as a yeah. drummer, how is it? singing and playing drums at the same time um is that difficult? well a lot of times when i'm rehearsing the band i don't have my i rehearse in my house so i don't I usually don't have the drummer unless i'm breaking in a drummer but okay. my drummers i got a few in the mix and they know my stuff for the most part and uh a lot of times i can just send them if i got a new track i can just send them the new track and they'll they'll do their homework and usually after a gig or two we got it right so most of the time I'm playing drums at my rehearsals. So I'm rehearsing like the horns, I'm rehearsing the guitar, ba bass, keys and everything. Um, so I'm already playing the drums at the rehearsals. Um, mm -hmm. On the, but, but I'm not really caring so much of that I'm getting the vocals right as we're rehearsing because it's more about them, it's not about me. Right. Um, so on the gig, is, is, it is a little different. I just did a gig up in um, Chester, New York last Friday. I'm sorry, Chester, Vermont, oh, and okay. at the yeah. Country Girl Diner. Big ups, Country Girl Diner. Jess, we love you. Charlie Brown, we love you. Charlie Brown su supplied the drums for me. Oh, um, okay. Because I played drums on that gig, and um, he also sat in. He sounded great on drums. Um, but it is a little difficult because then you have to, you know, I'm doing the show, um, and it's, you know, you have to get those lyrics across, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not just about you're not just rehearsing the band so you have to emote you have to remember the lyrics and project and then keep the groove it's a little tricky right it's a little tricky but i'm getting it and i'm getting it yeah how how far is uh chester vermont from from manhattan it's about four and a half four four and a half hours oh okay so not yeah. that bad not that right, bad. right we had a great time yeah right so frank great guitarist Great guitar player. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we we rehearsed last night, and Trey Danya, she she's on the gig next uh, Saturday. She's on the next few gigs, and um, we do. Uh, she sings. You know, we do this duet. She sings backup. She sings lead. We do a couple of like cover songs. We do some Shaka Khan, uh, mm -hmm. Sweet Thing, and she just right. she just destroys that. And uh, Frank. Frank last night during the rehearsal, he did this solo where he did the like George Benson thing where you, you're singing oh, the guitar scatting. notes. Oh, yeah. That is so good. Wow. I told him you got to do that on the gig. Yeah. Yeah. 
I saw George Benson at uh Montreal Jazz Festival. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you know who was who was at the gig too? Uh George Thorogood. He was oh, watching wow. the, yeah. So uh -huh. so oh you saw George Yeah, I saw George Benson. Um who else? I saw George Benson, I think, and John McLaughlin. That was the bill. And that was oh, wow. um yeah. that was, I believe, at Irving Plaza. And funny thing happened while well, during that concert Jaco Pastorius walked on stage oh, and, wow. he's, and yeah. he started going up to the different musicians and trying mm -hmm. to like hey can I play like when it was uh -huh. a bass player and the bass player was like no he went up to the piano player it was like they were not letting him he was just he just bum rushed the stage and <laughs> he was kind of bugging at the end oh yeah 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 short short spectacular life for him yeah short I just watched a video with him and Toots Thielsman, Toots, mm -hmm. the harm uh, chromatic harp player. Beautiful. Right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So many great people you've come across, and you're a great performer yourself. And uh, James Brown and Maceo Park are huge influences on you. Definitely. Tell, yeah. You met James, I think, right? Back in the uh, um, 2000s? Uh, who, James or James Maceo? Brown? James Brown. Yeah. Um, no, I met James. Yes, in in 2006, we did this concert in Greece, uh, this big concert at this place called La Cavitos, mm -hmm. and James was playing the same theater, uh, amphitheater, outdoor theater, like two days later, and then um, a few days later in Thessaloniki, I almost got to open up for James Brown. Uh, at this this outdoor venue that would have been amazing um, unfortunately to do the gig and in hindsight i should have done the gig but to do the gig one i wouldn't have been getting paid which is okay but i would have done it and and, right. and my band probably would have done it but i wasn't able to do my headlining gig in that city and i needed oh, that gig okay. i needed that yeah. gig. and right. uh so it was the deal was one, you can play open up for James, but you don't get paid. Cool. But mm -hmm. two, you can't play your headlining gig in that city, which was like the second Thessaloniki is the second biggest city in Greece. Mm -hmm. right. So it was like a big venue and it, it paid. So didn't do it. But I did go to the concert, uh, James's concert, and I was backstage and I get to, got to meet him and shake his hand. And it was amazing. Yeah. I've never been so nervous. In my right, life, right. I've never been starstruck by anyone uh, except for James Brown. I can truly, yeah. truly say yeah. I was starstruck and I was very nervous, but it was great. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I met him in 82 or 83. And the thing is, wow. I, I was probably like 18 or 19. And, and I wasn't a starstruck because I wasn't as deep into his music at mm -hmm. that age. Right. So I met met him and Wilson Pickett backstage, and James Brown was in Curlers. They did two shows. So wow, I covered Where for the uh, Stratford, Connecticut Shakespeare Theater. Oh, okay. Yeah. So and Maceo had to be on the gig. I think he was still wow. in the band there. And Man, then I met but... Maceo. Uh huh. This was really my wife. Actually, when she had her uh, radio promotion company, she worked for Maceo's son Corey. And we went to go see Prince in Montreal. And I was right before the concert was about to start. I was in the lobby and Maceo's there with his manager, Natasha, right on the like the third level. And so I introduced myself, you know, my wife works for your son. And we were talking and all of a sudden the lights dim and he says, oh, I got to go. He came down from the third level of the uh, Montreal Molson Center playing saxophone, just him. It was a solo walking down the steps to the stage. Nice. On the Rainbow Children tour. That was that was something. And he didn't fall. <laughs> wow. Because he was in Prince's band at the time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Did you meet Maceo? Yeah, I met him a few times because I opened up for him a few times. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, almost, I would say, I don't know. Ha uh, a few times, four times, something like that. Uh, tramps. Um, where else? Maybe in in DC at, at the Black Cat. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
That had to be a great double bill. You oh, and Macy, wow. Great. Take everything you got. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I so, up, so, uh -huh. go ahead. No, you go ahead. Him and Fred Wesley. I opened up for Fred Wesley. Oh, yeah. Fred, Fred's Fred been on the show. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Fred, uh, he's still Taurus. He's still yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah, Tramps. Tramps. Yeah, why, why, why did it close down? It was great. We I'm not sure. I'm not yeah. sure what happened. It was such a great venue. Yeah, yeah. I, I went to the strangest show there I ever went. I went to see Sheila E. And we had, uh, we were close to the stage. They made us sit on the floor like kindergarten children because the people in the back had tables and they were screaming during the show. So we're sitting during our set like, <laughs> like in a lotus position. That's crazy. It was the weirdest place I've ever seen a show. So I mean, that. The, yeah. They had, ta they had tables and tramps, like, like in the back on the side, the, the perimeter, and they That's had like open, open floor. So we're we, we're close to the stage, and they're yeah, sit down, sit down. That sucks because you know people want to dance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not like she has all. It's uplifting, you know, Latin funk. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. I believe I saw her at Tramps. I'm not sure. I can't remember. I saw I saw Morris Day. I I think I opened up for Morris Day in the time at Tramps. Yeah, but that's where we used to go there. So you, uh -huh. that's maybe the first time I saw you over there. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. And one time when I was opening up for Chuck Brown, I opened up for him for at least a half a dozen times there and in D.C. Uh, the 930 Club in D.C. That's right. Oh, um, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. And uh, Tramps. And and Prince was there. I, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we 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 passed each other. Him and uh, my time, my time. Yeah, Maite Garcia. Yeah, uh -huh. that was his first wife. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, I don't know if he's caught. I don't know if he caught us. I don't know mm -hmm. if he saw us, but he was there for Chuck for sure. Right. Yeah, he, he used to go and watch other bands and be amidst. Yeah. Like a mystery guy. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great loss too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you have never shied away from speaking your mind and and getting the pulse on political and cultural um, things that are happening. A lot going on in New York City, um, yeah. and also your your latest single that just came out. We played it here on our radio show. Awesome. Uh, Stand up mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. videos out there as well. And let's talk about this song and and uh, how how it applies to what's going on now. Yeah. So uh, basically, uh, it's it's about America right now and how divided we are, <laughs> crazy right. divided. There's people, you know, they say there's going to be a new next civil war and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a, another civil war. I mean, yeah. how would that how would that work? And we're not talking anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. We're in our own. We're in our own little bubbles some are in a bubble that that has no basis in reality mm -hmm. that's my opinion i just felt it was time and i wanted to get it out before the election uh because i think it's poignant right now it's rocking it's funkin uh tradanya's on it she's killing it uh the lyrics are really good uh some of the lyrics the politics are decided so to, we don't speak anymore mm -hmm. The powder keg is ignited. They're talking about civil war, you know, but can we pause for a minute before we all lose our mind? You best be sure that you're committed. It's your ass on the line, you know? So, uh, it, um, it's, it's right on point with, with, with what's going on right now. Uh, you better run. Stand up. Check it out. Check it out. It's, you know, the message of it is, is that we're all Americans in the end and we need to, you know, there's not, we, there can't, we can't continue like this, you know, so. Exactly. We can't continue yeah. like this because it's just not good. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens come November 5th. Uh, yeah. Big things. A uh, lot of question marks. So. Yeah. I know the, and, you know, I'm, I make no qualms. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a Trumpy. I'm, I'm, I'm for Harris. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, 
We'll see what yeah. happens. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't understand how, you know, people can support him after everything. When, I mean, people like Dick Cheney, <laughs> the most Republican Republican there is, Darth Vader basically came yeah. out and said he's going to vote for Harris. So see now, yeah. now, 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 I'm, now I'm speaking too much, yeah. but like when a Republican like Dick Cheney says, not only can I not support this guy, Mm-hmm. But I'm going to cast my vote for the Democratic yeah. ticket. You have to ask yourself, are you still a Republican? Or. Or yeah. are you just like. We'll follow this guy to the ends of the earth. And did you see uh, Kamala's speech yesterday with Liz Cheney? I saw parts of it. Yeah, yeah. I saw so, parts of it and I thought that was very powerful. It's just. just yeah. The screen of them two together. Right. I mean, that's just. Um, I mean, it's not about left or right. It's not about red or blue at this point. It's really, you know, about America and uh, do we believe in the system? Do we believe in the democratic system? Do we v- believe in the election results? Do we believe in democracy? You know, so. Uh, it's a weird time. It's a scary time. And I hope we survive another day. I hope I right. hope that um, this experiment called democracy continues. Who said it? Somebody said something like, um, is democracy great? No, it's just the best thing there is yeah, that's yeah. out there right now. So, you know, um, let's try to preserve it. And hopefully we'll survive another day and then we can get back to we can get back to like hopefully the republican party can have a rebirth because we need two parties at least mm-hmm. and 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 they can have a rebirth and a come into jesus moment and 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 be like okay let's rebuild let's get rid of this the racism let's get rid of the divisiveness and and Let's start pushing trickle down economics again, which doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. And, and, and it could be about issues and right, just right. Different, different things as far instead of name calling and you know, and look, look, I've met and I know people who 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 um support Trump and and some of them are good people. They're just good people. I know like I didn't, you know, at the time I think, oh, they're all this and that. They're not, they're not. They're just good people. They just happen to have fallen for it for him hook line and sinker and for some reason they're dug in they're dug in yeah it's like yeah but that's you know, yeah but we're not going to convince them and not they're gonna not going to convince them. us to jump you know I, I feel like though they they might they might they might come around years from now yeah you know i had another musician on the show who's been involved politically in, in years past and in the last interview we didn't talk politics but uh he said oh yeah when i was growing up politics were weren't they wasn't it supposed to be boring politics right right and it's it's turned into this that's right so so yeah. i watched the 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 um vice president debate the other night on tuesday right right um you know vance and um waltz tim waltz right? yeah yeah and they were so polite to each other. <laughs> yeah. It was freaking boring. And right. that's the way it should be. I was like, I was like, like somebody texted me like, this is so boring. This is, I'm like, that's the way it's supposed to be. It's right, not supposed right. to be like, you know, these digs and like, right. you know. Don't even um, look at the other person. <laughs> yeah. And just name calling and stuff like that. That's, that's Trump. That's reality TV, man. It's supposed to be boring. Let's just talk about issues. Now, was there right. some lying going on? Maybe on both, maybe even on both sides. Yes, definitely. But, but was it civil? It was civil. It, you know, they even agreed with each other on certain things. Like, right. I don't know. So, so that was almost like a taste of, that's what we got to get back to. Yeah. Sandy, yeah. Just, you know, let's stop the schoolyard freaking name calling and and making up this crazy crap, man. You know, yeah. people eating dogs and cats. People. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. Yeah. 
So um, yeah, it was interesting. So, so uh, yeah, yeah. I I, I like uh, Kamala Harris has the hit it and quit it way of making her speeches. You know, 20, 30 minutes. Yeah, and we're out. Yeah. yeah, instead of this drag out craziness, mm -hmm. <laughs> two hours. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and and once again, I'm I'm gonna say it. I got love for the people, even if you're voting for Trump. There's good people out there. There's some racists, definitely, and and um, but 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 there's some good people out there. They just happen to be wrong. They just happen to, be, in my opinion, they're wrong. But I wish you nothing but the best, and I hope uh, I hope you get over it when he loses, because he's going to lose. It's going to be a drawn out process, but still. Oh uh, God, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's going to be rough, especially. Uh, days after because they're not going to have the results election nah, night no nah. it's going to take a few days and then uh you know uh when those re results come in you know he's already setting it up for you know fraud rigged it's rigged yeah. you know um but um yeah we got yeah. that's what that's what stand up is about it's about mm -hmm. it's about coming together you know, no matter what side you're on uh yeah, so check it out. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely. My, Milo Z, the Reverb Nation page, Milo Z, mm -hmm. stand up. You can see it on YouTube. You can go to Milo Z's Facebook page. Spotify. He's on social media. Spotify, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, hey, listen, I got to thank you, Milo, coming by. This is like the fourth or fifth time you've been on the show. Always, I always it. great to see you. Always a good time, bro. And uh, if people next week, because we're going to be airing this next week, the mm -hmm. immediate gigs, do you have any on the top of your head? Off the top of my head, um, Tuesday, October 8th, we're at the Red Lion. Saturday, October 12th, we're at Carmine's Italian Deli and Cafe. It's a really cool venue. It's in Ellensford, New York, and it's a okay. deli during the day. But okay. they have a full back line. The, mm -hmm. the, the music setup is great. He's a real lover of music, this guy Rob, who, who owns it. And um, they're just a warm environment, good food good music so that's on um on saturday october 12th starting at 8 30 p.m we'll oh saturday october 26th we'll be at mm -hmm. arthur's tavern in the village west village and i'm doing my birthday gig there so oh, that's wow. fun. Yeah. Trey, oh trey danya is on the 12th and she's also at the arthur's tavern gig and i'll be playing drums on that gig and singing so come check out milo z on his birthday yeah. bat, funk bash playing drums, singing, right. it's going to be a funky good time. Uh, you bring in the handkerchiefs, of course. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, I always had yeah, my, my yeah. handkerchief. Um, what else? Uh, we'll be at Empire Casino uh, coming in November. That's the one in Yonkers. And then December, we'll be at Resorts World Casino in Queens. So we got gigs coming up and more coming oh, in. Oh, yeah. So. The yeah. resorts is right next to to Aqueduct Racetrack, I think. No. Yes, the the one in Queens. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Oh, before before we bid adieu, uh, I didn't make mention of your reunion gig that you got with you guys. You're playing drums. Oh so yeah. Cutting room. Yeah. So so I mentioned I started out as a drummer, mm -hmm. and uh, the the first band that I started really gigging a lot with and like making a living as a as a musician was this band called Joey Miserable and the Worms. Okay. Um, and um, they played every Friday and Saturday night at a place called Nightingale's, which was on 2nd Avenue and 13th Street. And they were just the most fun, one of the best bar bands ever. Um, they played they played some funk, they played a lot of jump, jump blues, um, and a lot of just cool original surf music, all kinds of stuff. And they had a like, pretty fanatical fan base. And um, so we'd play there every Friday and Saturday night at this place, Nightingales. Well, uh, and some great musicians in it. Uh, when I first joined the band, we had this saxophone player, uh, Curtis Fields, who, okay. who played with um, who played with Ray Charles and recorded with Ray Charles. On trumpet, we had Holly Farris, which was the trumpet player for James Brown for years before the worms and then when the worms broke up after he went back to the worms played with Josh stone played with uh uh got to roll with it baby stevie one stevie one yeah yeah um um yeah so um he he 
when I joined that band, I was like 21 years old. I was a kid, the youngest guy in the band. And I really learned a lot with this band. Um, and um, in that band, I started songwriting and I wrote a rap called Buddy Bug and I got to perform it with this band. So it was really a great learning vehicle, this band. Great band. So anyway, we're doing this reunion show Friday, November 1st at the Cutting Room. Joey Miserable in the Worms. Okay. And I'm really excited about this. So I've been, it's good that I've been doing these little lead up gigs, playing drums on my own thing, warming up for this for this gig, because this is going to be more yeah. uh, of a chop buster. And right. um, real excited about it. So, so Holly's back in the mix. Uh, John O'Manson, a uh, great musician, Simon Chartier, who what is was Joey Miserable, but he, he has his own thing. Great guitar player, great singer, great songwriter. Uh, Chucky Hancock. You probably, you must know Chucky Hancock. Yeah, I, the name sounds very familiar. Seton, yeah. or Raven. He goes by Raven now okay. on sax. Uh, who else? Jerry Duggar. Oh, I, I, yeah, Jerry Duggar. He's friends Jerry with Tom Duggar. Gould. Jerry yeah. Duggar was the bass player for the Worms, yeah. So, oh, okay. um, um, and, I, and that's, we met, I met Jerry and Dan Lynch's. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. And we were playing together in a band called uh, J the Johnny Allen Band. Great guitar player. Okay. You remember Johnny so, Allen? Yeah, Blue? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, so that's 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 going to be fun. So that's November first. Really excited yeah. about that. Um, it's that show is going to be sold out, I think. So uh, it's the early show, like seven started in the seven seven to nine thirty. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, come through if you know the worms. Um, check them out. And if you don't know the worms, you know Milo yeah, Z. And he's you know Milo Z. So, yeah. so, 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 right. so, that's going to be a funky good time for sure. Yeah. So, thanks, brother. New music, and always great to talk with you. And we'll have more to talk about after November 5th, I'm sure. Awesome, brother. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I look forward to that. And I'll be sending you some new music too, too in the new year. I plan to release uh, 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 Gone Away, Ghetto Beat Down. And then I wrote this other song. Uh, it's a really it's a throwback. It, it's we talked about Al Green. It kind of has a production of it, like that 1970s Al Green uh, mm -hmm. vibe. It's called Old School Love. It's classic like Bill Withers type of um, joint. It's like one of those songs you hear it once. You'd be like, wow, this is a classic. Yeah. So yeah. I'll send you all that good stuff. So you've been in the music business for how many decades? Four? Well, I started first doing gigs at about well uh, 18 something like yeah. that so uh yeah that's a, a, that's the mark of a really great musician still, still longevity still, doing it. still you haven't it, gonna do it you know it's the thing that makes me happy it's the thing that uh it's the thing that makes me happy it's the thing that makes me sad it's the thing that gives me dreams it's the, it's the thing that breaks my heart um but it's the thing i love the thing i need to do and it's just, I'm very blessed to be able to do it. I'm very blessed to be able to have it, to get through whatever, you know, it is, it is like, um, um, therapy, right. you know, and musicians and people who just love music or whatever, it, it really helps. It really can help. Uh, you know what, uh, a, f a friend of mine passed away, another, a musician recently he he took his life and uh i wish he would you know he was he, i'd known him since i was like 16. good guy uh really took me by su surprise but um i felt like uh, i don't know and, and but then again he was a musician and he didn't he it, it didn't save him but but it can save a lot of people and it say it, it, it definitely helps me Right, Whatever right. I'm going through, if I just try to write, listen to music, work on music, it helps me. So music and is that, healing. That's what and, I got to say. Yeah. And nothing beats the uh, the natural high of, of music. And, you know, That's probably it. after a gig, you're like on That's cloud it. nine, right? Yeah. That's it. That's it. A gig well played, you feel great. You sleep so good. The next yep. day, you just feel great. Yeah. And it's even great, just great, going, yeah. to, going to see live music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And have fun. That feels great. That's therapy too. So right. let's let's yeah. keep going, people. Yeah. Let's let's keep keep seeing live yeah. music. Right. The Milo Z uh catalog of music and live performances, reverb nation, Milo Z, and get this new music and go see Milo on the various dates. So he's always out there. Thanks, Milo. Thank you, Joe. Really appreciate you, brother. Okay, thanks, bro.
Jesus put that good fire. The altar together. 